Brought to you by the Highway 5 South Church of Christ in Mountain Home. Speakers are Keith Sharp and Trevor Campbell. We invite you to call or write the church to submit questions for the speakers to answer. We'll provide answers from the Bible to your questions. I received a question recently concerning miracles. The question was as broad as it could possibly be. The question was simply, what about miracles? Well, we're going to talk about that today. Good evening, Trevor. It's good to be with you on the program. Tell us about be yourself here. and about the, the church over at Payette. Sure, sure. Yeah, my name is Trevor Campbell. Uh, I am a preacher, and uh, I worship at the Church of Christ in Payette, which is on Highway 62 on the north side of the highway in Payette, next to the tractor dealership. And we meet Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., and we have an open Bible study where uh, we discuss the scriptures. And then at 1045, we have a worship service, and we invite you to come and join us for both of those. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah. And I'm Keith Sharp. I preach at the Highway 5 South Church of Christ here in Mountain Home. We meet one mile south of the Highway 62-412 bypass on Highway 5, on the way down to Calico Rock and Mountain View, on the left, one mile down. We have our classes at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, classes for all ages. Then we have our worship assembly at 11. We have a service at 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. At the present time, we're studying through the Psalms on Sunday afternoon. We have a ladies' class at 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning. All the ladies are invited to that. They have excellent studies. And then we have our midweek services at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. You're invited to come to those services. There's a, a special event that we have coming up soon that we'd like to tell you about again. And that is the Ladies' Bible Studies. This is our 8th annual Ladies' Bible Studies. August 1st and 2nd will be on Thursday afternoon, August 1st, and then on Friday morning, August the 2nd. The studies will be Choosing to Live Wisely, Studies from Proverbs. If you have questions about that, about this event coming up, then there are phone numbers on the screen that you can get down and you can call either of those ladies and they can tell you all about uh, these ladies Bible studies. This is just for the ladies, August 1st and 2nd, Thursday afternoon and Friday morning. Well, let's get to our question that we have to study this morning, or that's this evening, excuse me. That question is uh, concerning miracles. What about miracles? Well, I want to begin by talking about what a miracle is, and then we'll uh, turn it over to Trevor, and he'll tell us about the purpose of miracles. Uh, people, uh, when, when something good happens, if a baby is born, or if, some, if somebody gets well and they've been sick, then people say, well, that's a miracle. Well, I beg to differ on that. That's, that's not the case at all. Uh, miracles are a specific phenomenon that we need to understand. In John chapter th 2, verses, uh, beginning in verse 1, we read about the first miracle that Jesus worked. And that could be an illustration of what all miracles are. You can read this for yourself. I'm going to briefly tell the story. It's recorded in John chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and it calls it this beginning of miracles that Jesus did. Uh, and in this, uh, Jesus and his mother and his disciples were at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and they ran out of wine. Uh, and his mother came to him about that. And, and to, to make this brief, Jesus turned the water to wine. Well, what's miraculous about that? Water turns to wine every year. There, is, there are grape vines. They're planted in the ground. The rain comes. The grape vines grow. They produce grapes. The grapes are picked. They're pressed. And the wine is produced from the grapes. And every year that process is a natural process that happens according to natural law. So why is this miraculous? Well, of course, it's obvious. It was miraculous because Jesus did it instantaneously. He bypassed the usual laws of nature and instantaneously made the wine from the water. And that's the reason it's a miracle. A miracle is the temporary suspension of natural law. God intervenes in nature and does something for which there is no natural explanation. Now that's the evidence value 
of miracles. Miracles have evidence value because there's no natural explanation for them. Jesus went about working miracles. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22, there's one of, of several passages that show us what miracles are. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22, the apostle Peter is speaking. He says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in your midst, as you yourselves know. Now there are three terms used there for the miracles. First of all, there is the word miracle. That word miracle is from the Greek word which means power. This is the direct intervention of God. It is the direct power of God. And then there, are, there is the word wonders, and that shows the effect that it produced upon the audience. They could not understand how that happened. We understand how a baby is born. We usually understand how someone gets well from a, a dreaded disease. There are natural explanations for those things. There was no natural explanation for Jesus turning water to wine. There was no natural explanation for Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. That was the direct power of God intervening into the natural realm. And so it caused the people to wonder. They could not understand how this could happen. And then it also caused them signs. Signs tell us something. That's the purpose of a sign. If you see a sign along the highway, it's telling you something. These miracles told people something. What they told people is that this person is from God. And the claims that he, that he is making are true claims because his miracles prove that he is from God. And so the signs that Jesus did were called miracles, wonders, and signs. They're the direct intervention of God into the realm of the natural. Well, Trevor, I'm going to turn it over to you, and you have more to tell us about miracles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's actually go to the Old Testament, uh, back to Exodus. Uh, a lot of times when we think about miracles, we we tend to think of the New Testament, Jesus and the apostles, but maybe I do at least. But if you really stop and think, there are a lot of miracles that took place in the Old Testament that were performed by some of uh, God's prophets that he sent to, to teach his people. And uh, one of those uh, is in Exodus chapter 4 uh, concerning Moses. Now, God had appeared to Moses uh, uh, by means of a, of a burning bush, and that got his attention. And uh, God told Moses that he wanted him to lead his people out of Egypt. And uh, in chapter 4, and beginning of verse 1, you know, Moses questions, well, if I go to these people and, then I, and I start speaking th these things to them, how are they going to believe me? You know, are they going to really believe that, that you sent me, that the Lord sent me? So in verse 1, it says, Moses answered, and he's talking to God here, and he said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice, Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand, and he caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. All right, so God makes it clear that the purpose behind this was so that the people would believe him and the people would believe that God had sent him and he truly had come from God. Uh, now, he gives them a couple more signs, just in case the folks don't buy that. Uh, he gives them a couple of other things here. In verse 6, he says, Furthermore, the Lord said to him, Now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. And he said, Put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again, and he drew it out of his bosom, and behold, it was restored like his other flesh. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be, if they do not believe these two signs, or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river, pour it on the dry land, and the water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land. And then Moses said to the Lord, well, actually, we can go ahead and stop there. The, these are uh, signs that, that God gave Moses uh, the ability to do, uh, so that these folks would believe him, that they would believe that he had come from God and therefore believe his, 
his message. And uh, truly, these things are miraculous. And, and as you mentioned about signs there in Acts chapter 2, we also see that same word here. These are, these are signs to show that this man had come from God. So they prove something. Now, when a baby is born, that doesn't prove anything concerning the person that had the baby or concerning right. the doctor that delivered the baby. Uh, so far as being from God, that's simply the fulfillment of natural law. Sure. And, and those things happen every day all over the world. Right. But when there's a true miracle performed, that is a sign that this person is from God, right. and we are to listen to this person, right. and we are to believe whatever claims this person is making. Right. That was the purpose of the miracles that Moses was able to work, mm -hmm. and that was the purpose of the miracles that Jesus worked. That's right. There's other places in the New Testament. Now, by the way, I appreciate the fact, Trevor, that you mentioned that this is found both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, they were not things that happened every day because uh, the people of Israel and, and, and uh, Pharaoh were shocked oh, yeah. by, by these things. These are not things that yeah. they were used to seeing. That's so right. don't think that just because these are recorded in the Bible as having occurred in old times, those things just happened regularly. If so, they would lose their evidence value. Sure. They would not be valuable as signs. But rather, these were rare occurrences, and they occurred to demonstrate that the person is from God, that what he claims is a true claim. I want to look at some other places in the New Testament, uh, but I do appreciate again, Trevor, looking at the fact that these occur in the Old Testament as well, uh, where there are uh, these words are used uh, interchangeably to show what miracles are and the purpose of miracles. Turn over to the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 2, uh, the three words that are recorded in Acts 2 verse 22, when the apostle Peter was talking about the work of Jesus, those three words plus another phrase is found to describe these events, the, this phenomenon, uh, in Hebrews chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. Therefore we must give heed, a more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we should drift away. For if the word spoken through angels, that's talking about the Old Testament, proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, now notice, and was confirmed, that is, it was made sure. That's what that word confirm means, to make sure. It was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Well, that would be the apostles. Well, how did they confirm to us what Jesus had said? Verse 4, God also bearing witness. You see the purpose of these events? They were to bear witness that this is from God. God also bearing witness both with signs, all right, there's the, the message value. And wonders, there's the effect on the audience. With various miracles, there's the power behind it. It's the direct power of God. And gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now here's the source from which the people in the New Testament, beginning with the apostles but also to others as well, worked these miracles. They were gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul spends an entire chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, discussing uh, how these miraculous spiritual gifts came. Uh, and then in chapter 13, he discusses their purpose and, and, and their duration. And in chapter 14, he discusses their use in the public worship assemblies. So these were very important things that happened in the New Testament age. They were miracles, wonders, signs, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, Trevor, why did they work those things? Why did God enable them to work these miracles? Well, it was certainly so that the people would recognize that these were unnatural, as you said, and that they, they had to have been from God. And, and therefore, the words that these, spoke, these men spoke, that is, would be from God as well. Okay. Uh, can you give us some passages that would yeah. back up that? Sure, sure. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Now, in this particular case, we have uh, Philip, and uh, Philip is, is preaching the gospel, but he's also performing some of these, these signs, these, 
these miracles uh, in Acts chapter 8. And let's begin at verse 5. And uh, he says, uh, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and he preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And we can go ahead and stop there. Okay. Uh, so there, in this example, we have you know, Philip going down and preaching, uh, but it specifically says the multitudes, they listened to what he had to say. Uh, they heeded those things, meaning they, they were obedient to them, uh, when they heard and they saw the miracles which he did. So that backed up his claims that these things were from God, and these are the things that are necessary for you to do. They could believe those things based on the fact that they saw those miraculous events. Okay, so this is proof, this is evidence that the speakers are from God. And this is how we know that the Bible is from God. This is how we know that Jesus was from God. This is how we know that the apostles were sent by God because they worked miracles to confirm their claims. Now, uh, people claim to have these powers today. Before I go to that, is there one, any more you want to say concerning uh, what the Bible says concerning the purpose of the miracles? Well, yeah, we could, uh, we could do just a little more. Uh, okay. Let's go to Acts chapter, or Acts, excuse me, John chapter 20, I'm sorry. John chapter 20. Uh, you know, these, uh, these miracles, as we've already seen, uh, were performed uh, as signs so that the people would believe the messenger, uh, but they're also for us. You know, they, these things were witnessed to and they're recorded for us that we might also believe these things that were spoken. And uh, in John chapter 20 and verse 30, uh, John says, And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So it's also for us that we might believe these things as well. Okay, uh, and we're, we don't have to accept these things just because one person said, well, I, you know, I heard he worked a miracle. These were people who were eyewitnesses of right. the things that he did. In, in fact, continuing there in the book of John, uh, what Trevor read is actually the theme of the book of John. It shows the purpose for which John wrote his book, the signs, the miracles, the wonders that Jesus did to prove that he is the Son of God. And as, as John is drawing his book to a close, in John uh, chapter 21, verse 24, he says, This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. John is recording his own eyewitness testimony right. that these things are true. And so I want you to think about this, please. Uh, if, if everyday events are miracles, if the birth of a baby, if, if a person just getting well who's been in the hospital and the doctors have done everything that they know from a medical standpoint to help that person, and, and we're praying for that person, and the person gets well, if that's miraculous, then what evidence value do the miracles of, of the New Testament, the miracles of the Old Testament have? They're just the same kind of occurrences that we see every day. But these are not the same kind of occurrences that we see every day. These are things, and here's the importance, these are things for which there is no natural explanation. Therefore, they have to be supernatural. They have to be from God. And there wasn't just one witness. There were many witnesses to these things. Uh, in Acts chapter 1, when uh, uh, the apostles were selecting another apostle to take the place of Judas, uh, they had to select one. This is Acts chapter 1, verses 15 through 26. Acts chapter 1, verses 15 through 26. A and they had to select someone. Notice in verses 21 and 22. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us, all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. There were already 11 men who could bear witness of the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. They had been with him 
for the three plus years that he was ministering upon this earth, from the time he was baptized by John in Jordan until the time when he ascended back to his father after his resurrection from the dead. They were eyewitnesses of these things, not just one, not just two, not even just three, but 11 men, and then one more, Matthias, was chosen who fit this description, who was someone who had traveled with him all the time when he was upon the earth, and who therefore all the time during his personal ministry, from the baptism of John to his resurrection, therefore could say, I saw these things with my own eyes. And in fact, the Apostle John talks more about this evidence value in 1 John chapter 1. Look there at verses 1 through 3. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. That which was from the beginning... He's talking about Jesus, of course, which we have heard. In other words, we heard him, which we have seen. They saw him with our eyes, which we have looked upon. Now, that looked upon is intensive. They didn't just casually gaze at him. They looked intently upon him to see, is what I'm seeing really happening? Uh, we call that kind of a, a second take. Uh, are we sure that that's what's really happening? Because it's something I cannot explain. So they, they were heard him, they saw him, they looked intently upon it, and our hands have handled, they even touched him, concerning the word of life. And he says, the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness. They saw with their own eyes. They heard him themselves. They touched him themselves, and they could bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested, made known to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And so the testimony that we have in the Bible concerning the miracles that Jesus worked, concerning the miracles that the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, and the other apostles worked, that Philip worked, who was not an apostle, but the apostles had laid his, their hands on him. The miracles were witnessed by multiple people, and they could all testify, we have seen this, we know this actually happened. It's not just something I heard about somewhere. It's something that is recorded for us, and this demonstrates for us the things that we must believe, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that the Bible is the Word of God. That's the purpose of the miracles. Trevor, go ahead. You might have some more you want to say about the purpose of miracles. Uh, actually, I'm good for now. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's good. Well, let's go ahead. Uh, these miraculous signs that people believe that they have access to today there's a passage, we may not have the time to go all the way through this passage today, uh, that tells us about when these uh, events are going to come to an end. But let's begin, and, and, and uh, Trevor, we can kick this back and forth if you want to, but let's begin looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And particularly, we're going to begin uh, in verse 8. Now, in verses 1 through 7, uh, the Apostle Paul shows us there's something that is more important than miracles. And that's something that's more important than miracles is love. Uh, and he's going to say more about that. But we must always put love as the most important attribute or quality of our lives. But then picking up you know, the entire uh, lengthy passage, 1 Corinthians chapters 12, 13, and 14, all three chapters, are a discussion of the miraculous spiritual gifts that uh, disciples in the first century were able to perform. Now, beginning in verse 8 of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he's showing, going to show us d the duration of these gifts. Verse 8, love never fails. Now, the word fail there doesn't mean that it will not accomplish its objective. The love of God, its objective, uh, is to save all mankind, but not all people are going to be saved because not all people will accept Jesus Christ. But it means that love will never cease, and this is the point. It's talking about eternal duration of love. Some, something will cease, but other things will go on. Love will never cease. 
but whether they're prophecies, they will fail. Now, prophecies, a prophecy from God never fail to come to pass. If, if it failed to come to pass, and Moses talks about this in Deuteronomy chapter 18, then it's not really a prophecy from God, and they were not to believe the man if his prophecy did not come to pass. And so what it's talking about is the gift of prophecy. This miraculous gift of prophecy is going to cease. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Now, that doesn't mean people will, will cease being able to speak. But the miraculous gift of tongues, the gift of being able to speak in various languages miraculously, that gift is going to cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. That's not talking about that people will cease knowing anything. Right. It's talking about miraculous knowledge. Miraculous knowledge is going to come to an end. So there's something that endures forever. That's love. There are things that are going to cease, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And those things he mentions are three of the nine spiritual gifts, the miraculous gifts from the Holy Spirit that he enumerated in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Well, you know, we're starting to run short of time here, Trevor. So I'm going to stop right here and say we're going to pick up and discuss this more in our next program. Uh, but we would like to remind our uh, viewers uh, of the services, first of the Pyatt Church of Christ. So Trevor, go ahead, please. Yeah, we meet uh, at Pyatt. We're on Highway 62. Uh, on uh, the north side of the highway next to the tractor dealership. We meet at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, and uh, we have a Bible class in 1045 for worship. All right, and if you live in the area of Piatt, we certainly hope that you will come out and, and worship with them and, and attend the Bible class and, and take part in the discussion that they have concerning the Scripture. And of course, we invite you also to the services of the Highway 5 South Church of Christ. We meet at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning for our classes. We have our worship assembly at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. We have a 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon service. We have ladies' class at 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning. We have our midweek services at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. And we invite you also to remember that we have the Ladies' Day coming up August 1st and 2nd. And, and you, are, you ladies are invited to come to this. Uh, and you can call the numbers that are on your screen, and, and you can ask whatever questions you want to about those ladies' Bible studies. This is our eighth annual ladies' Bible study, Choosing to Live Wisely, Studies from Proverbs. That will be August 1st and 2nd, the Thursday afternoon and Friday morning, August 1 and 2. You ladies are invited to come to that. We hope that you'll take advantage of that and learn more about living wisely as we see it in the Proverbs. Uh, so come out to those if you possibly can. And I want to also remind though our viewers, uh, Trevor, that we invite your questions. Trevor, tell about the questions that we receive on the program, please. Yeah, you can, uh, you can phone us or email those questions or, uh, or send them in, uh, as you've seen. And uh, we'll, we'll try to answer those questions with the Bible. And uh, you, when you submit those to us, you know, it's confidential. Uh, you, you will remain anonymous. We're not going to bring up your name on the program. Trevor, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, you can phone me, 870-435-2737. Uh, and of course, I invite you to send your questions to me if you'd like to do that. You can get in touch with me, Keith Sharp. By, uh, you can email me, Keith Sharp, uh, at suddenlink.net. You can call me, if you prefer, at 870 870-321. 5746, or if you prefer to write a letter, you're welcome to do that. Just send it to Post Office Box 263 in Mountain Home, 72654. We want to answer your questions on the air. And I want to repeat what Trevor's already said. We won't mention your name. Uh, we won't in any way embarrass you. We're glad, we, uh, we, we're glad to receive these questions. We take the questions, honest questions, and questions that deserve a Bible answer. Now, next week, we're going to continue our study of miracles. We've seen what miracles are. We've seen the purpose of miracles. They're evidence. They're signs that the person who does these things is from God. Now, we want to continue next week and discuss when were the miracles to cease. Thank you for watching. Please watch again next time. Thank you for watching Search the Scriptures. 
you have a Bible question or comment, you may call 870-321-5746, email keithsharp at suddenlink.net, or write Keith Sharp at P.O. Box 263, Mountain Home, Arkansas, 72654. And your question will be answered on the air. Be sure to watch next week at the same time for another edition of Search the Scriptures. Until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace.